On the evening of November 15th, when the world leaders were gathering at the G20 summit in Bali, somewhere in the far eastern part of Poland, more specifically near the village of Shevardov, which lies on the southeastern part of Poland, very close to the Ukrainian border. The Ukrainian border is somewhere around 4 to 6 kilometers away. This village was hit by two stray missiles. In other words, those two missiles came from unknown origin. No one has any clue where it came from. But now it is no more a secret. By the end of this video, I will tell you who did it. Now because of this missile strike, two Polish citizens were killed. As you may know, Poland is part of NATO alliance, the largest and the most powerful military as well as political alliance in the world. If you read Article 5 of NATO, it says, any kind of armed attack against one or more member of NATO shall be considered as an attack against all the members. In simple words, NATO has 30 member countries. Even if one member is attacked, the remaining 29 will support unconditionally. In the history of NATO's existence, Article 5 has been invoked for the first time after 9-11 attacks, wherein all member countries of NATO were conducting joint operations in Afghanistan. Now, if we consider Article 5 of NATO, then this missile strike on Poland that happened on the evening of November 15th can be considered as an armed attack. And if you know because of Russia-Ukraine conflict, immediately Russia came under suspicion. Everyone thought Russia fired those missiles. So there is this whole chaos and confusion that started on the internet, wherein news media started saying, now World War 3 is definitely going to happen because Russia has officially fired a missile on a NATO member. So all these kind of narratives started building. Even if someone who is not very well versed with the Russia-Ukraine conflict as to who is actually doing what, even for that person, the first immediate thought that would come is, Russia must have done it. Russia is to be blamed. Because since the last 8 months, that kind of narrative has been made and it is very easy to buy that narrative. Anyhow, presently if you see, NATO has done all of its investigation and they are not at all in a hurry to wage war against Russia. Because they came to know that those two missiles that were fired in Poland's territory were actually fired by Ukrainian forces and not Russia. Any kind of preliminary investigation of the area where the missiles were hit will easily tell you about the origin of those missiles. In fact, the Ukrainian president Zelensky wanted immediate access to the site so that he can do his expert commentary, in fact live commentary through social media, defending his actions and again put the blame on Russia. But surprisingly, United States President Joe Biden has said that the missiles were unlikely to have been fired from Russia. Even NATO's Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg has said there was no indication that a missile that landed inside Poland killing two people on Tuesday was the result of deliberate attack by Russia. Now, if you see, this is a problem for Ukraine's President Zelensky because he is directly dismissing United States and NATO's suggestion. And what is United States and NATO suggesting? They are saying it is Ukrainian forces who have misfired their missiles in Poland. But Zelensky is saying no, it is Russia, Russia, Russia. So to understand this whole scenario, first you have to understand why Russia and Ukraine war started. It started simply because Ukraine wanted to be part of the European Union. And more specifically, it wanted to be part of the NATO alliance. And Russia has a big problem with NATO's eastward expansion, which is a fact. After the fall of Soviet Union, NATO has been constantly expanding towards the east. Look at all the NATO members year of joining. If you all remember, in the month of January itself, Russia has said that United States has ignored its security demands over Ukraine and they have left very little room for compromise. And Russia has also said, United States President Joe Biden did not accept Russia's demands. That means it is the Western countries, more specifically United States, who intentionally wanted a conflict with Russia and they chose Ukraine as a battlefield. And then you can call it fear or realization, even Ukraine has dropped its idea for NATO membership. Now I want you to think about it. This war is going on since 8 months and it is not coming to any conclusion. And then we have also seen that United States and Europe is running out of weapons to send to Ukraine. I mean practically speaking, you cannot expect United States and other European countries to give away every single defense equipment to Ukraine. You can help, but there is a limit to help and that limit is slowly arriving. Now in such a scenario, if the Ukrainian President Zelensky wants to continue this conflict, what is the best thing that he has to do or you can see the smartest thing that he has to do to make United States and other NATO members get directly involved. All he has to do is find a way that compels NATO to invoke Article 5. And that is the reason Ukraine had to fire a couple of missiles towards Poland. 
Everyone knows this. Even Zelensky knows it. If he does something like this, then automatically all eyes will be on Russia. That is how you successfully get NATO officially involved in this conflict after 8 months. Now there are a couple of things in this and this could be your thought as well. The first thing is, if the Ukrainian forces have fired the missile towards Poland, then those missiles will have some identification number or name that will suggest Ukraine's involvement. And let me also say this, those missiles can either be Ukraine's own missiles or they can be American or any other European country's missile. Because the West collectively has given a lot of weaponry to Ukraine since day one. So this is the first thing. Now the second thing is, those missiles can also be Russian made missiles. Why? Simply because there were many Russian missiles that did not explode on impact. And I'm sure Ukrainian forces have access to some of the Russian unexploded missiles. And they must have very well repaired it or fixed it and then reused it. This is also a possibility, we must not rule this out. In fact, the initial statement by Poland was that a Russian made missile fell in their country. So if you see, Poland and Ukraine, they were very quick to blame it on Russia. But then United States said, hold on. Now the third point is, if you read United States President and NATO Chief's statements regarding this missile strike in Poland, let me show you the exact words of Biden. He said that the missiles was unlikely to have been fired from Russia. And then he also said he wouldn't conclude anything until the investigation is complete. Though he stated that the lines of the trajectory suggested it wasn't fire from Russia. If you pay attention to this statement, one half of the sentence will suggest, okay, Russia is not involved. But the second half of the sentence says, conclusion will be made only after the investigation is complete. It is very important to read between the lines. You simply cannot take it on face value. Now, if you see this incident, that is the missile strike happened on the evening of 15th November. Next day, that is on 16th November morning, Biden called an urgent meeting with G7 and NATO leaders. Obviously, they are going to discuss about how to take up this incident, what to do about it, how to react to it. On the other hand, even Russia reacted to this incident and it accused Poland of being hysterical. If you notice, from day one, Russia has never shown any kind of defensive attitude. Russia has shown proactiveness, it has never chosen to be reactive because they know that they are dealing with the entire West collectively. Any sign of defensive attitude will actually turn out to be detrimental for Russia's existence. I have said this before and I will say it again. Russia is not just fighting Ukraine, it is fighting the entire West collectively. Now when I say fight, I do not mean soldier to soldier fight. Everyone knows that the whole West is giving weaponry support to Ukraine. I have an entire list of who gave what. Please go through it. And then Russia is also fighting the Western narrative, sanctions, and at the same time it is also strongly holding on to the global balance of power, so that the entire tilt doesn't shift towards the West. Plus, if you look at this entire conflict, Russia has deployed somewhere around 20-25% to of its military towards Ukraine. Russia is a very large country, and it cannot move all the soldiers to Ukraine. So 20-30% to of a country's total military strength is still a significant number. It is not at all a small thing. But then whatever it is, along with the ground battle, Russia is also fighting the Western narrative, their sanctions, and it is strongly holding on to the other side of the power. See, you can support Ukraine or you can choose any side, or you can also be neutral and support humanity, whatever it is. But you cannot ignore the fact that there has to be an opposition. If the global balance of power entirely tilts towards the West, that is not a good thing. Currently, the heavy lifting of the East is being done by Russia. Unfortunately, the center point of seesaw is Ukraine. No country in this world ever wants to be in this position. But then someone always ends up in some or the other way. Just like how the Western countries are doing their calculations and planning their next move, similarly even Russia is doing that. Let me also remind you of the Nord Stream gas pipeline incident. For weeks, no one had any clue who blew up the pipelines. Even in that case, if you remember, United States and many Western countries did not officially take Russia's name. But then the narrative that was heavily propagated was that Russia blew up their own pipeline. And then later on we found out that it was UK who was commissioned by United States to do the job. The same thing happened during Bucha massacre as well. You will not find any official statement from United States or UK wherein they have directly blamed Russia for Bucha massacre. It is only Ukraine who is shouting. Russia has said it openly that they did not do it. The neo-Nazi group or the Azov battalion of the Ukrainian forces, they are the one who faked it and staged it just to make the Russian forces look bad. 
Now, a similar pattern can also be seen in this Poland missile strike incident. As I've already said, to start World War III, you need to officially make NATO engage in this conflict. Although NATO is currently unofficial part of this Russia-Ukraine conflict, but they are not officially part of it. NATO is currently providing intel, weapons and training to Ukrainian forces. This is not at all a hidden secret anymore. But then to make NATO officially part of this Russia-Ukraine conflict, all you need to do is throw a stone or maybe a firecracker towards any one NATO member's territory. That will give NATO and United States a reason to invoke Article 5 and send soldiers from 30 member countries to Ukraine and fight the Russians directly. So everything boils down to invoking Article 5 of NATO. That is the only option left with the West if their plan is to bring down Russia once and for all. Because Russia intentionally and willingly will not do anything that's stupid to invite everyone collectively for a fight. If Russia has problem with Ukraine, it will deal with Ukraine one on one. And it has been doing it since day one. If Russia have any problem with any other Eastern European country, Russia will deal with them one on one. So Russia will never intentionally or even willingly invoke Article 5 of NATO. The only one who can do that is the one who is playing the victim card. United States, UK and Western European countries, especially the G7, they are aware of all these tactics. Please don't think they don't know this. They may choose to pretend ignorant, but then they know that Ukraine will do something like this. Or who knows, maybe they must have suggested Ukraine to do this. Otherwise, what is the point of having such a strong military alliance called NATO if there is no conflict in this world? And by the way, just look up on the internet, you will see that throughout these 8 months of Russia-Ukraine conflict, United States and other NATO troops have been deployed in the Eastern European region and that too in large numbers and they are doing regular military drills and air drills. In fact, when Nord Stream gas pipeline blew up, that is on 25th or 26th September, NATO was doing military exercises in the Baltic Sea. NATO was also doing its annual nuclear drills just last month in October. So all of this cannot be a coincidence. Some serious planning is going on. Now incidents like this Poland missile strike can turn out to be that spark that will give rise to this big fire that can potentially kickstart World War III. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.